एच आई हिंदुस्तान इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ मैरिटाइम ट्रेनिंग now if you think of a floating top similar to a barge which is open on one side a double hull barge <coughs> open on one side it means that when you want to ballast the barge you can ballast it in such a way the barge goes down and since one side is open either the forward end or aft end you can just i am talking about a box shaped barge just open the front end submerge the barge in such a way that it goes below the water minimum at least to the draft of the ship which is going to come inside for example if the ship is coming with a maximum draft of 6 meters you make the barge go 6.5 to 7 meters with some amount of safe under the clearance so that what happens is the barge will be waiting here very close to the shore ship will just float inside will be towed inside or float inside now what will happen based on the ship's docking plan <coughs> they would have arranged the blocks in the bottom and as the ship comes inside they will know exactly up to which point it is supposed to be pulled in based on the arrangement down below they pull it to that extent then start deballasting the whole barge which will start coming up now and the barge capacity is such that after as you keep deballasting it it will have the capacity to take the full weight of the ship so the barge will <coughs> <coughs> come out of the water the barge will come out of the water in such a way at least that the ship is clear of the sea level that means the barge will be something like this i am only showing the forward half thing Once the ship is seated in the blocks, the barge will be good enough to float in such a way that it takes the ship clear of the water. Are you able to understand? That's how it is constructed. Whereas graving dock is something very similar to your lock gates. <coughs> When a ship goes inside the lock gate, gates are closed. After that, they start ballasting or deballasting depending on what is the next requirement. So, just imagine they have arranged the blocks at the bottom of this lock gate, pump out the water completely, and the ship is made to rest on these blocks. <coughs> that is a great dock. Traditional, very old docks are generally on green. Yes, very old locks are on grading, but for the purpose of convenience, if you see, floating locks are much more convenient to use. For what reasons? One is you don't have to set up any structure for the purpose of uh, uh, space. You can just throw this and take it anywhere you want. If you find that some work has to be done in this area, you have to throw it and take it somewhere else. <coughs> that is the advantage of floating docks so you can just throw it and take it anywhere you want but this is only for small size than a cylinder floating docks no it used to be the case it used to be the case but now we have developed floating dry docks even for large ships 
that uh, earlier thing was problem was floating block were able to accommodate <coughs> these small ships. But nowadays floating blocks have been designed to take even larger, very large ships. In fact, floating docks nowadays what they do, they design it to take even a very large ship. Sometimes when they don't get instead of two large ships, they will take two or three small ships. That's how they utilize the capacity. So that is why floating docks are becoming more popular nowadays. But traditional docks are all always great. If you see in Greece and all, majority are great. <coughs> right, so coming back to this. As far as ship coming into a dock is concerned, it's always taken for granted that it will come with a stern trip. Why not come by head? First point, which touches the yes. block. Why should only the stern touch first? It's heavier and strong for the stern. Strongest. What is so strong about it? <coughs> this part of the vessel is part of your stern frame. What is it called? It's called the soul piece. <coughs> it is completely cast. <coughs> it's the sound the strongest part of the ship. That's why it is not fabricated, it is cast. This portion is part of your stern frame and the key plates which are laid down here, they are going to come and end here. Yes, the key plate which wraps this soul piece, that plate is called coffin plate. <coughs> so then this wraps the soul under the soul. Coffin. <coughs> so okay, spelling wise it is not that S O U L. For that reason they have converted this plate as coffin plate. But otherwise your forward part is not designed to take the weight of the ship. Just imagine, the ship comes with a stern turn. As you pump out the water, the stern touches. And as the stern keeps in contact, when the water level drops, what will happen to the ship's underwater level? They keep pumping out the water, no? I am talking about a graving dock. If, if it is a graving dock, they will keep pumping out the water. What will happen to the ships underwater only? Once it the uh, soul pitch touches the block. After, After that, any pumping out, there will be a reduction in the ship's underwater volume. <coughs> Let us say, initially I entered the dock with the displacement dock, 10,000 times. But after that, you said underwater volume is going to reduce. I calculate the new forward arc graphs, hydrostatic graph, I calculate my displacement. I get the displacement as 9,000 times. The water volume is reduced. <coughs> what has happened to this fire? Transfer those rocks. Ah. We need to account for this 500 tons reduction in displacement. The only logical conclusion you can come to is this 500 tons has been transferred to the rocks. Otherwise, where is this fire gone? Has your ship's weight reduced? No. It is just that your underwater volume is reduced. So mathematically to account for it, it's 
compensating by trans getting transferred to the king blocks. Are you clear on that? But just imagine, due to some damage, <coughs> if your ship comes to a rock, raving dock, raving docks are all fixed. If your ship has a trim by head, in that case, if you are going to bring in and compound, forward will touch. And forward is not designed to take that weight. <coughs> in such a case, a floating dock is going to be much more heavy. Floating dock, you take the ballast in such a way it is trimmed more than your ship's trim by head. For example, if your ship is having a 1 meter down by head, you trim the dock by 2 meters by head. So once the ship is in and you start uh, deballasting the barge, which part of the ship is going to touch? Again, stern. That is a big advantage of floating docks. Are you clear? Because you are able to trim it. <coughs> With that, you are ensuring that the soul pieces are again going to take contact. Sir, once uh, it is trimmed by head, they are coming to the rain down. First, if the power part of the ship is the underwater volume, uh, the remaining part of the ship still is in the water. No, still not transferred. No, no, no. But this fire, I am just giving you this example. At least this 500 tons will be taken up by that point. Sir, this is just the starting stage. Yes, 9500 is water bone. Buoyancy is supporting. What about this 500? Sir, you know, the starting stage, the initial is 10,000. So just when it touches, this 500 is transferred. No, no, no. It will start with 9,999. One by one, one by one, it is reduced. It is not directly 500. I have just calculated at some instant. <coughs> now this will go up. Yes? Let's come back to the normal vessel. Coming back to the graving dock. These are the clean blocks which are lying up. The ship has come in. The forward draft of the ship was 4 meters. <coughs> the aft ground was 6 meters. Ship has come in with a 2 meter trouble. Initially when the ship came inside, the water level in the dock was let's say 7 meters. That means you had a safe 1 meter clearance. With that you came inside. Now, after the ship comes inside, once the gate is closed, they start pumping out water. The ship's <laughs> floating free now, but as the water keeps getting pumped out, let's say water level has become 6.5. Will there be any change in the hydrostatic particulars of the ship? No. no. Because it is just touching. I mean, we, we cannot say that something has already been transferred. It is just touched on. Any doubt? No. So, theoretically, we can say nothing has been transferred as yet because it is just touched. Yes. Yes. What has happened now? <laughs> the water level has dropped by half a meter 
After the stir, the stir. stir. <clears throat> now, the ship's underwater volume is reduced. What will happen to the trim of the ship? Initially, arrival trim was 2 meters. What will it be now? It will be less than 2, that's all I can know. I cannot say how much, but I can be 100% sure that it will be less than 2. Maybe 1.8, maybe 1.7, I don't know. Yes, but the trim is going to reduce. Just because my uh, water level is 5.5, directly I cannot say how much will be the trim. <coughs> Yes? Once the water level inside the dock has become 5.5 Right, so if the water level is 5.5 How much is going to be the power drop? <laughs> it could be more than 4, it could be less than 4, it could be equal to 4, I don't know. But can we be 100% sure? Yes. <laughs> the half draft will be 5.5? Yes. Sir. <coughs> is it not why? That is the first contact point. So, any change in half draft will be equal to the drop in water level? All of it here? Yes. The only thing I can be 100% sure of is my half draft will be equal to the water level inside the dock. Whereas, since I don't know how much is going to be the power draft, I cannot guess the term. Are you able to understand? I cannot guess the term of the ship. So, one basic thing which you need to remember now, make a note of it is that any drop in water level after the stern is taken to the drops will be equal to the change in water. Drop in water level inside the drop will be equal to the change in water. No. For example, after the stern is touched, how much is the drop in water level? How much is the drop? 0.5 after the stern is touched. I am not talking about from the initial phase. I am really talking about after the stern is touched. After the stern is touched, the water level has dropped by half a meter. How much is the reduction in half drop? Same half, half a meter. Originally 6 meters was the drop. Now it is 5.5, I think reduction is half a meter, no? Yes. So the basic concept here is any drop in water level after the stern has taken to the blocks. So <laughs> drop in water level. After the stern has taken to the blocks. Is equal to the reduction in half draft. Is equal to reduction in the half draft. The ship's trim will reduce? Yes. Yes. Let's say from 2 meters, the ship's trim has become 1.4 meters. For example, let's take, you read the power graph. Because you can read the graph no, inside the graph. How much is the trim now? 1.4. 1.4. 1 
Therefore, truth changes how much? The point. Yes? Truth changes 0.6. Then what is the truth change formula? We use now in truth type A. W. Yes, Now, D is distance between fulcrum and the center of gravity of the weight. That is what is D we took. Now, here, whatever weight has been transferred to the block. <laughs> We refer it not by W, we denote it by letter T. T is the weight transferred to the blocks. In that example we saw 10,000 initial displacement, final displacement, 9,500, 5 returns was T. Clear? Now, coming back here. From where is the weight being transferred to the blocks? Very close to the soul piece. For all practical purposes, we take it as half per kilometer. <coughs> because it's very close to that group. From there to the fulcrum, let's say at center of rotation was here. This is what we take it as D. But look at what is D here? LCF. It's equal to LCF, no? From half per kilometer, weight is being transferred. F is the center of rotation, the D automatically becomes equal to LCF. And please remember here we are using some type A concept. So if your trim change is known to be 0.6, you will use all initial data. Do you know the arrival hydrostatic graph? When you are entering the graph, with that can you find out LCF and MCTC? Yes, sir. Yes, all of you clear? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. If you know the LCF, you know MCTC, yes, you know the drum change. Can you calculate how much is P? Oh, yes, sir. Sir, see the graph now. <coughs> first four and uh, six. six. Arrival graph. How much was it? 4 and 6, 2 meters. 2 meters. Now, after half a meter graph, I checked the graph, this is what it came. Sir, uh, this height of the dock, water in dock, from where it is measured? Sir? From, we are measuring from the top of the box. From the top of the box, right? Because all the blocks are not of, uh, not of the same height. They give the dog from the From the bottom. But we are interested if the water level goes below the blocks. For me, there is nothing more to do. We are interested in only how much is above the blocks. Height of water on the equal to the stern the graph is only the stern on the block and the stern on the graph is different symbols. When we talk about level, we will only be bothered about this. Up to the top of the graph. After the water level goes below this, there is no more calculations required. The shift is already sitting completely on the blocks. <laughs> Entire ship's weight has been taken by the blocks. Calculation wise, I am not bothered after that. Is it not? <coughs> Make a note of it. Then you can. Right. Now, so using the trim change, very quickly we can calculate how much is the Weight transfer to the blocks, that is P. Yes? Very quick way of calculation. Right. That is one aspect. Will there be any problems or changes to your GM? Yes. Yeah. One is underwater volume changing. So KM changes. 
That is one aspect. The other aspect is just imagine how we calculated this trim change. We assume that the weight is being discharged from this point. <coughs> That's why we took this as B. Weight is being discharged from this point. That means weight is being lost from the keel level. What will happen to the G of your ship? Weight removed. <coughs> it's like this chart, no? But why does the ship develop trim by head? Trim change by head? It is like weight being removed. So if a weight is removed from bottom, G will move up. <coughs> I am not interested whether the G will move forward or up. That is inconsequent. It will go up. I am only worried about the vertical shift of G. And what is the formula for G G1? This D is different from what we saw earlier. That is for term change. Here what is D? Change in KG. Change in KG. Initial change in KG. If you take a ship, I load some weight here. The weight will have its own center of gravity. D is the distance between these two. Remember you asked me in the morning. First session, how to take D and D and both my D. So G is not the initial kg of the ship or the parcel. It is the difference between the two. This is what is D. <coughs> so can I say it is the difference between kg of ship and kg of parcel. That is what is D. <coughs> to be used in the kg one formula. Weight is lost from kg level. What is the kg of the parcel then? Zero. 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 Then what is the kg? Kg. Only kg. Instead of w, what we use? P. P. W minus W two. W minus P. Final displacement, no? Kg is popular. We take the final displacement. So with this, I will get the value of G G one. But think carefully and tell me, is there any weight actually removed from the ship? No. no. But you can see the effects, the changes happening by the head as if it is being discharged from the stern. Yeah. Uh, there is definitely loss of GM due to this G shift of upwards, ship starts becoming unstable. In fact, just a year back, there was one of these naval vessels in Mumbai in dry docks. In fact, when they were refloating, the ship capsized inside the rock. <coughs> Which is why, in practical uh, dry docking cases, whenever we come to a dry dock, we calculate all the stability aspect everything. But while departing, we ensure that we maintain the same arrival condition. We do any works in the dry dock, all that is separate. We ensure that. Departure the same as arrival condition. <coughs> but what happened in that ship was, I'm not sure, this is what I remember reading, that they had fitted some uh, new weapons on the deck which had much higher weight than what it was initially had. It was replaced. So the kg of the ship itself was changed. <coughs> so that was not accomplished. So coming back here, the formula for GM is what? But this GG1 also has to be accounted. Shift of G upwards. That will also be minus only. Yes? Why because that is vertically shifting, it reduces the GM only. 
Where is FSC? Now, this GG one, <coughs> because it is moving, uh, because it is causing the ship's KG to move upwards and causing a reduction of GA. But nothing really has been removed from the ship. Instead of calling GG one, we call it virtual loss of GA. So this term we use here is virtual loss. Instead of calling it vertical shift of G, what is the net effect it is giving? It is causing a loss of your G. But why you attach this term virtual? Because there is no real way to move from the ship, but the effect is felt. The effect is felt. Yes, and negative G is moving upwards. GM. What will happen to GM? Reduce. GM will reduce. But if you want to find out the effective KG, just take this problem. This is called effective KG. Due to the virtual loss. Okay, now, so as the water level keeps getting dropped, this p value is continuously going to increase. Numerator is continuously going to increase. Because this is increasing, the denominator will keep decreasing. So can you see this value is going to keep shooting up very high, gg1, virtual loss. Now, <coughs> at some point of time, this virtual loss, if it exceeds your arrival gm, what can happen to your ship? Negative. Negative. It can develop an unstable equilibrium. And that is the reason I told you about the naval ship which capsized. There was no external force in the dock. But the very act of filling up itself will cause some disturbance. The ship will definitely flop. <coughs> now, at some point of time, GM is going to become negative. You cannot avoid that. But my only interest is, I only want it to happen after the bow touches. Why? First external <coughs> touch. And please understand in dry dock it has it's very 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 important that they keep adjusting in such a way that the entire keel sits on the keel blocks. Because otherwise if it is all misplaced you will find that all the transducers blocks will come and cover. So you have to align it perfectly. So initially they will concentrate only on the aft part. They keep adjusting, adjusting in such a way that the stern, the sole piece comes on the key knobs. After that, they will concentrate on the forward part. <coughs> they will keep adjusting because it is not easy for you to just estimate and uh, adjust it. As the water level drops, depending on where is the point of tying up, it may get slackened or tightened. Yes? The ropes may get slackened or tightened. So accordingly you have to keep getting inputs and keep adjusting those ropes. <coughs> you may have to slack, other you may have to tighten. <coughs> accordingly you will find that the entire concentration is on the forward part to ensure that it touches the skin blocks properly. Are you clear on this? After that what happens? They will put solid wire ropes to tighten up your forward and aft parts or in some dry dogs they put the hydraulic chokes. Once that is in place, let the GM become negative. Is the ship going to collapse? No. It is all being supported completely from the outside. So I am going to be only worried about my stability, that means about my GM remaining positive till the bow touches. After that, it is bound to become negative. But nothing to worry, supports are there. <coughs> that is why the time when the bow just touches the bounce, that is called critical instant. Right? 
Because all the way there. Then at that time, my GM is positive. Negative. If I know that at the time the mouse's GM is positive, after that it is going to become negative, no doubt. But the ship is going to be supported. How GM is positive? I need to ensure GM is positive. <coughs> How my calculations? Now, is there any SOLAS requirement regarding my GM inside dock? How much will it be minimum or critical? Nothing from the It depends on your company policy. But I need to ensure it's a positive one. With all these errors in calculation, I need to ensure some sufficient positive value. <coughs> but from the time the stern is touched, there is speed transfer happening. From that time itself, there is going to be a loss in GM. And up to which point I am worried? Till the bow touches. But remember, even at that time, there will still be a lot of water above the keel drops. That means it is not that the entire ship's weight has been transferred. Still, a lot of buoyancy will be there. Like in the example I took, 10,000 tons arrival displacement. Probably at critical instant you may say displace, uh, displacement is 6,000. <coughs> that means only 4,000 would have been transferred to the cops. Still another 6,000 taken by water, buoyancy. So just because my ship reached critical instant, that means my entire weight has not been transferred to the cops as yet. It is going to happen slowly. But during that part, after critical incident, definitely at some stage GM will be zero. It will become, start becoming negative, very high negative. But I don't have to bother. Because ship is already supported. Are you able to understand? What is critical incident? About the time at which the bow just takes to the box. Why it is called critical incident? Because I need to ensure that my ship has a positive GM at least until that point. After that, it is bound to become negative, but I am not bothered. <coughs> After that, it becomes negative because of this water you said. Because of P value becoming too high. Because this virtual loss will be greater than your arrival to. But Sorry, if, arrival GM. But it's greater during the, this uh, critical incident. No, that I will have to ensure by calculation that it is never happening before. How? I will calculate the virtual loss. I will ensure that my arrival GM is kept much more than that. But how can you calculate this virtual loss? Let's go reverse. Do you know what is your arrival trip? In the example we took, forward 4 meters, half 6 meters. What will be the trim at critical instant? Zero. Zero. Bow just touching the blocks, zero. How much is the trim change? Two meters. That means, can I say, trim change to critical instant is equal to arrival trim? Yes, sir. Because I need to ensure that the units in I need positive GM, no? Arrival trim. So in this example, 2 meters is equal to? LC of P. Can you calculate P value here? Yes. <coughs> I told you, LC of LCDC, I know you take the issue. Because we are using the trim type here also. Once you know the P, can you apply it in this formula? Do you know your arrival kg? Arrival displacement? You calculated P now up to critical instant? Can you apply here and get virtual loss? Sir? <coughs> Any doubt? No, sir. And if this virtual loss is less than my arrival kg, what does it indicate? You are positive and you have a positive GM 